related to these apps, you will have a PhD shucking and jiving, shucking and jiving with your PhDs and all your experience because you are chasing likes and follows. When I work with content creators, that is the first thing I tell them. Do not chase viral videos. Don't chase that. Do not let that be your focus because you will be disappointed. The people who see those videos a lot of times aren't even your target market. They, they don't even speak the same language that you are speaking, whatever it is that you're doing. So then it puts you in a space where you, you have that one video, it goes viral, it hits. Again, that adrenaline, you're so happy, the dopamine, it's like, oh yeah, this is it. But then you post, let's say your videos are about cooking but you did a funny dance video or a funny video that went viral. Millions, millions of views. But then the next day you, you post your pancakes because that's what you always post, cooking. Now that video has three likes. I'm, I, that's a bit extreme. Well, no, not really. But that video has three likes. So now you're like, I need to dance again. I, I need to get to dancing. I need to get to doing these voiceovers. You start losing who you are in an effort to always create viral content. Bonjour, as I'm me, and bienvenue to a chat that I can only have here. C'est moi, Jesse, your resident Francophile, and here on Cappuccino's and Consignment, I focus on lifestyle, travel, and finance. S'il vous plaît, take a moment to like, subscribe, and follow. Follow me over on Insta. I have a blog, which, s'il vous plaît, if you have to pause this video, go to my website subscribe and then come back or better yet do like a dual split split your screen split it subscribe <laughs> on both tiktok and insta you have to search pour moi because i am not always on your feed which is the premise of this video i want to share my experience with content creating and things that i would absolutely do differently if I were starting over as a content creator and what I am currently doing different as a content creator. I started Cappuccinos and Consignment. One second. I thought I turned the heat off, but I hear it turning on and I have the window open. And we're sustainable around these parts. Voila. So I started Cappuccinos and Consignment as a blog, but was still kind of dibbling and dabbling on Insta. But in a different capacity. It was really just stories because when I started Cappuccinos and Consignment, I was commuting a very, very long commute, which is why I started blogging in an effort not to resent my husband because once I remarried and we moved, it, it was just a lot. So I wanted something to do on the train while I was commuting. My background is in design, fashion design, art history, all of those things. And I really wanted a creative space because where I was commuting to, I didn't have room for creativity. That was not the time or place. I knew me sewing clothes, creating clothes. I knew that was just something I could not do. So I started blogging, started blogging, but then every morning I would record stories on Insta. If you remember my God awful, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to insert one of my OG OOTD videos. They were bad. <laughs> they were so bad, but say la vie, vintage Mazami are still here and some are still here and it makes me so happy. So with that, Insta was not my priority. Insta was just the place where I literally, and you'll see just, I still have the same mirror. I'm looking at it now where I would just hold the mirror up. I had my single double shot of espresso and I would just tell you all what I was wearing. That's how I treated Insta when I first started. It was more so like, hey, here's my outfit, but go to my blog because that's where I really talk about things. That all changed, I want to say, stay at home orders. During stay at home orders, I, like a lot of people, really started leaning into content creating. I was, I mean, I was the viral queen. Perhaps many of you all may have found me. And, and in fact, I want to know what video. 
did you find me here on YouTube or did you come from Insta? I'm actually curious to know. And if so, do you remember what video? I started creating content on Insta and it was more so the trendy audio videos where um, you you all know, I'm, I'm sure you all can remember some of my old IG video. And when I say old, it's like two years ago. IG videos that were very, very, they were funny. And that's what I loved. I, I'm a happy person. I'm a funny person. And it was fun. It was so much fun. And it became funner because those videos started going viral. Every single video I posted, like went viral. It was a great time. It was the best of times. And then it became the worst of times. And I am going to tell you why. That, um, what is it? That adrenaline boost that constant boost to chase the the next viral, to create rather, the next viral video. It became addictive. It became so addictive that I started neglecting my blog where this started. I started neglecting my blog because blogs are slow growing, but absolutely more sustainable. And perhaps in this video, I'll go back to it. I started chasing the quick fix and the quick fix was Insta. It was Instagram. That, 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 that's where I was. I hadn't even flirted with TikTok at that time. I got so addicted to, oh my God, I could post this video. And when I post this video, I know millions of people are going to see it. I'm going to get all these hearts, all these comments. It was so psychotic when I think about it. So psychotic because a lot of people from those videos aren't even around anymore. And that's the thing with these viral videos where I tell people all the time, when I work with content creators, that is the first thing I tell them, do not chase viral videos. Don't chase that. Do not let that be your focus because you will be disappointed. You will be disappointed. One, the people who see those videos a lot of times aren't even your target market. They, they don't even speak the same language that you are speaking, whatever it is that you're doing that you want to continue doing. So then it puts you in a space where you, you have that one video, it goes viral, it hits, again, that adrenaline, you're so happy, the dopamine, it's like, oh yeah, this is it. But then you post, let's say, let's say you cook. Let's say your videos are about cooking, but you did a funny dance video or a funny video that went viral. Millions millions of views. But then the next day you, you post your pancakes because that's what you always post cooking. Now that video has three likes. I'm, I, that's a bit extreme. Well, no, not really, but that video has three likes. So now you're like, I need to dance again. I, I, I need to get to dancing. I need to get to doing voiceovers. You start losing who you are in an effort to always create viral content. What happens with that is that you, you lose yourself and it's no longer sustainable or you just stop doing it. You stop doing it because once you become so addicted to those numbers, those vanity metrics, you are almost willing to do anything, anything to get there, especially if you do not have a marketing team with you, a social media manager, people who have those things, this does not apply to them. But when you are a content creator doing everything yourself, you're creating, you're coming up with the ideas. You don't have anyone looking at analytics to tell you what time, what to do. You don't have a social media manager. You start to veer off course. You start to lose yourself in that process because, and I'm, I'm just going to use the, the, the chef, the chef who enjoyed taking photos of their food, the chef who enjoyed creating meal preps, all of those things. The chef slowly stops doing that because all the views, all the people that came to them because of that viral video, they don't want to see that. They want to see what you did that made you go viral. So either you totally kind of let 
the click and go and you just start posting whatever is going to get you the most views or you become so disheartened that you just stop posting. I was one of those people. I became one of those people where I was so caught up on the vanity metrics because it does, it feels so good to have a video with all these likes, all these things, all this, all this, all this. It feels good, but there's really no connection. There is no connection that is made with people who are only joining you for whatever funny video you did, but not the core of who you are. So many things <laughs> has happened over the time of me. And I know that kind of veered off course that this is, I, I shared before, I don't write down a blueprint of the videos. I kind of have an idea and I just let it flow. I let it flow. <laughs> the initial point of this video, before we started getting into viral and chasing those likes and losing yourself, what was it? Oh, if I could do things differently, if I were starting all over with content creating, I would not put so much energy into Instagram. I would have been putting that effort here. There was a time during the, the viral Jesse era, there were times when I would spend three ah, hours creating a reel. Creating a reel that no one even sees anymore. No one even sees those videos anymore. So spending all of that time for instant gratification that now it is obsolete versus here, I have videos that I have spent 45 minutes on two years ago and it's still getting views. If you are considering becoming a content creator, and again, there are always going to be variables. Perhaps you are not the kind of person who likes being on camera speaking, perhaps you don't like that. So it's certainly not for everyone. But if you are someone who is willing to try to get on camera, I would tell you to try on YouTube. From what I have seen, YouTube by far pays its creators the most out of all platforms. You get paid the most. Your content is pretty evergreen. The way YouTube shows things, I have Mazami who have just joined me like this week and they're being shown videos that I posted years ago. YouTube analytics is more in depth. It, it really, it, it's, it's a real algorithm versus a lot of these other platforms where it's all about the trending audios, where it's all about those things. I wish I had, and I, I'm one of those people, I do my best not to have regrets. Like I am, I, I just try not to, because why? What, what is me questioning or mulling over what I could have, should have, could have done? That's not going to do anything. However, I really do wish when I started content creating that I had focused more on my blog and on YouTube because so much time, I, I, and I don't want to say it was wasted because I have built really, really good relationships on Insta. A lot of opportunities that I have, people have found me on Insta. So I don't want to say it was a waste of time. However, I feel that my content would have been more appreciated here. The amount of time that I spent on Instagram to constantly have my account flagged. I cannot tell you all. Every single day, every single day when I log on, I have some warning, some kind of warning, trademark, copyright, this, this, and there's never a reason. When I push the icon to see, okay, tell me what is the copyright issue here? There's no way to get in touch with people. There's no way, just, it is horrible. It is absolutely horrible. Like I cannot think, and, and that's what I shared on the call. It is so anxiety inducing that to know that and not saying that YouTube is, is above this because any of these platforms, you don't own it, which is why I always suggest content creators that I work with to create a blog. People will tell you that blogs are dying. No, they are not. No, they are not. And one of the beauties about your blog is that it's yours. Everything on Cappuccinos and Consignment is mine, which is why I continue, I continue, I continue 
to share, please subscribe here, here, because this is where my attention is here and my website. Because if all of this stuff goes down, I have over 120,000 as I mean on Insta. If I log on and, and it, I just can't log on because my account has been disabled, it's been whatever, I have no way of getting in touch with those 100,000 mes I mean. However, if you are subscribed to my website, I have your information. I have your email address. I can tell you what's going on. What's I can keep you in the know. So anyone, if you are considering, if you are considering becoming a content creator, I can tell you, Put your energy outside of definitely Instagram. I've had really bad issues, experiences rather, on TikTok as well. So far in YouTube, please don't make me out to be a liar. <laughs> so far, I can say YouTube has been my safe space. And YouTube, along with the blog, it is one of those things that a lot of people are not going to do because they don't want to invest the time. When I got on YouTube, I, in my head, I just thought that, oh, everyone who is a mess I mean on Insta is going to just come over here. No, that is not how it works. It's not how it works. It is not the same. So when I started my YouTube channel, you could not tell me that I wasn't going to have 50,000, however many mess I mean I had on YouTube at the time is what I thought I was going to have the moment I said I was starting a YouTube channel. It is a good thing because it does allow you to have different avatars for different spaces. I know that anyone here on YouTube, any mess I mean here, you are really, really invested. You are really, really dedicated to my life because that's what i'm showing you're connected there are as i mean on instagram who don't know that my mayor passed so consider that consider that if you are thinking about being on social media consider your why do you just want to to post random videos and it's all about the clicks and views or do you actually want to build a community i started i started with the the concept of building a community and then i lost my way <laughs> and i became so obsessed with vanity metrics and and how many followers i had how many likes that is now gone i am getting back to that space where my community matters more than oh i gained this many followers or this or that i would much rather have five lord i hope <laughs> to have more but I would be totally at peace having a handful of dedicated people who care, who show up, who support, than just a bunch of random people who really have no interest in, in me, who don't care. So we kind of touched on a lot of things. If you have questions, how about that? I do better with questions. <laughs> I even get stared off track with those. If you have questions about content creating, about my train of thought with certain things, leave a comment. Do leave a comment. And this is something that I have been rolling out as well. I have been working with content creators. They just book an hour session and we go through those things. How to show up online. How do you build a, an engaged community? How do you do those things? And one of the one of the components that I always push is making sure you have your own space, making sure you have your own space and not to let vanity metrics determine the path in which you take. Because if you leave it to these apps, you will have a PhD shucking and jiving, shucking and jiving with your PhDs and all your experience because you are chasing likes and follows. Yeah, so that that's going to be the premise of this video. <laughs> the end. I share the premise. If I were to do things all over again with content creating, I would not spend as much time chasing vanity metrics on Instagram. I would have put that time into 
platforms, one that are mine and platforms that are more sustainable. YouTube is more sustainable. YouTube is more sustainable. Like there is no denying that the issues that I have had on all the other platforms constantly, how am I, th this is the thing that confirms. I know why I was getting copyright issues here. It was music. It was music. Do I think that my account was disproportionately flagged? Perhaps, but I don't know enough YouTubers to, to see their journey if they had those issues. When I first started with content creating, showing up here on YouTube, I was always having issues with copyright. There was a time when a car rode by and my account was flagged because of the music. But then I look sometimes at other people's videos and they have the entire song playing. I don't know if their videos are monetized. There, there are just certain things I don't know. Whereas on Insta, I know more people on Insta who are creators where I can have offline conversations with him, with them as to, did you get flagged for this? Because I got flagged for this where we can compare notes. I don't have that circle here on YouTube. So once I got very, very um, just obsessive to the point with, with music, I didn't have any issues here. On Insta, on TikTok, I am constantly being flagged for copyright, for trademark, for all of those things. But I share it here. And my account has never been flagged for anything outside of music. So again, I hope YouTube does not make me... <laughs> a liar or prove me wrong, but I feel safe here. This is the safest I feel outside of my blog, my memberships. It's here. If you are a content creator who is starting out, I would urge you to spend the most time on YouTube and developing your own space, your own blog. I do, there is value in Instagram and TikTok and those things. I, I will not deny that. I would not tell someone not to be on those spaces. But as far as spending hours, hours, no. If you are going to spend hours doing anything, it needs to be on your platform or here. So I hope this very random, it's not even random because it, it's what's happening. It's what I'm going through. It is what I am doing. I hope this helps any budding content creators. Again, if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments, but deeper conversations, I will have those with one-on-one -on -one calls. If you are a content creator, you need help brainstorming, you need help getting those ideas that you have out of your head and into the world, book a call, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. My fellow content creators who have book calls with me, if you are okay, you know I, I, how I am about anonymity, share your experience here so that Mazami can tell you, I get you where you need to go. I have not grown on Insta because that's just not a priority for me right now. I'm growing here and this is what matters to me. My subscription group is thriving. My email list is thriving. Those are the things that I am focused on now. So yeah, I, um, I'm curious to see, because I don't think I've ever done a video like this on, on YouTube. So I'm really interested to meet new Mezami. If you are a new Mezami, you, this is your first time ever seeing me. I feel like I'm a vibe, like stick around, stick around. So I cannot thank you all enough for your continued love and support. And you all know I'm, I'm here. I am here. I operate in a space of abundance. I know that there's, there's enough for everyone. I believe that. So yeah, I will see you all on the next vlog. Alrighty. Ciao for now.